it's known that the um, the digestive transit times also change as the animal grow, but uh, uh, we we it it certainly will be different depending on the ingredient we we use with the, the animals. So that's another point that needs to be studied. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we are back again with Dr. Urbano Ruiz. If you didn't watch last week's episode, I would highly suggest you go back and listen to that one first because this will be a continuation of that same episode since there was plenty to be discussed in that first episode. So Urbano, I'm not going to have you give any more details about your background um, since we just kind of talked about that last week. I just kind of want to jump back into this topic when we were discussing um, some of your work with nutrient variability and different feedstuffs. So uh, we think that there is a, a, a large room to, to, to explore, to study, and, and try to do like a fine turning in the nutritional matrices of uh, ingredients and uh, a fine turning diet formulation uh, as well. So another question I have is from those products you tested, which ones tended to have the greatest amount of variability from one sample to the next? Uh, I think uh, for the, the, the two ingredients that had, had a high fiber content for the um, corn gluten meal with 21% crude protein and for the corn germ meal, uh, we found great difference among the, the the pigs with different ages. It, it was possible to observe that for the majority of nutrients, and, uh, there is a, a, a specific um, a, um, nutrient value in, in each phase. Gotcha. And then the last question I have for you is that, do you guys plan to do any more studies to kind of analyze different ingredients and compare different nutrient levels and variability as well? Yes, yeah, certainly. Actually, uh, 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 I had the, the intention to do a study like that uh, for, for a long time. And just from two years ago to, to now that we, we put it in practice. But uh, um, we went to, to this, the same kind of, of study using other ingredients, beginning with ingredients that are uh, um, use use it in greater amounts uh, here in Brazil, and, and we want to to begin by the the, the common ingredients: uh, corn, uh, soybean meal. And we want also to investigate the reasons for these difference differences. Actually, you know, we know that the capacity of the animal to produce uh, the enzymes to digest uh, <clears throat> the, the diet uh, uh, change as the animal grows. But we, <clears throat> we, we want to, to investigate how it changes, uh, what are the, the differences. Uh, we know that, uh, um, or, or it's known that the, um, the digestive transit times also change as the animal grow, but uh, uh, we, we it, it certainly will be different depending on the ingredient we, we use with the, the animals. So that's another point that needs to be studied. And also, uh, I think it's very important to study the, the change in the microbiota according to, to, to the pig growth. So one of the hypotheses is that the, the cells, they, they, they have a greater um, capacity to digest fiber, to, to use energy, in part because of a great diversity of microorganisms in the large intestine and also a, a, a greater amount of microorganisms. But uh, 
today we have lots of tools to to study this kind of of, of things deeply. Uh, we we can see, uh, do DNA sequencing and uh, look to the general of each microorganisms and try to correlate this with the increase in the digestion of, of fiber, of, of energy. And after that, the, I think a, a very important uh, point is to use all of this data, or, I mean, to use the nutrient and energy values determined for in each age to formulate diets and really compare uh, if it will bring us uh, an increase in growth performance or at least uh, uh, the maintenance of the growth performance, but uh, with a more efficient use of the, the ingredients, and also if it will be reflected in a reduction of the excretion of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic matter. So uh, uh, we we did a first trial. The, the, the results were very uh, uh, very interesting in our point of view. <laughs> but uh, uh, now I think we we have lots of other uh, studies to do to expand to another ingredients to investigate the the the, the mechanisms that uh, 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 regulate the the this difference in, in uh, ingredients digestibility and also at last to apply the results in practical diet formulation and evaluate the growth performance of the animals and the uh, indicators of environmental sustainability or uh, <clears throat> environment footprint of, uh, of the, the animal's production. Kevin calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, Optimize nutrition and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Okay. Thank you very much, Clayton. It was uh, uh, an honor for us to, to be part of your podcast. Yep, absolutely. And it was an honor for us to have you on this episode as well. So thank you again, and thanks to everyone else for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com, and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition-related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.